Hey everybody, my name is Daryl Bear. Welcome back to Maya Mondays. So today we're going to be talking about XGen inside of Maya and Texturing. I've done some webinars and some other blog posts about Texturing um, and XGen in general, and the workflow sort of changed as the releases have changed. So this is essentially how you would do it in a current version of Maya 2016. I'm actually using the extension release of Maya 2016 that was just announced at SIGGRAPH. So what we want to do is we want to talk about how we can use XGen in conjunction with something like Photoshop or another paint package that does not work with PTEX textures. Because keep in mind, everything in XGen is basically using PTEX textures. So underneath it, Maya is converting UV textures to PTEX textures. And I'm going to show you a workflow that I think is, is pretty, uh, pretty straightforward. And hopefully it will make sense to you guys and you'll be able to do the same thing um, to use Photoshop with with XGen. So this is a really simple scene that I have here. It's just a polygon object, uh, ambient light and a directional light. So we want to get an XGen description on this guy. So we'll just create some instance primitive splines. Pretty straightforward there. I've got auto preview turned on. So we'll just crank that density up nice and high. We'll give it some length and maybe give it a little bit of taper. And since we're here, we might as well jump over to the modifiers and just randomize this slightly with something like a noise and a cut. So we'll add both of those guys on there. So we'll take this noise and just give it a little bit more toward the root. And we'll go back to that cut. And the cut's just doing like random between 0 and 0 0.08 or something like that. You know, we could also go in here and add, instead of using that as the expression, let's load up one of the samples. Just go to color and we'll grab this noise E in there and then just, you know, crank that guy up a little bit and really get some random, some random length to that. So there you go, pretty straightforward. So here's something that's kind of interesting. When you're working with XGen, the output of what your render does and the preview is decoupled. And the reason we do that is because a lot of times you're going to want to do something more of, di of a diagnostic nature inside of the preview in your OpenGL view or your DirectX 11 view, your kind of non-rendered view, something like showing the region maps or maybe showing your clumping maps. You know, you might want to see that stuff and understand what's going on with your, your kind of groom independently of what the shader is going to look like. So that's why they're decoupled. For this example, we're going to be working up a lot of the color work using the primitive color, but ultimately we're going to be referencing the same maps for our render color. So that's why they're broken. It actually adds a lot of flexibility to the workflow. So just, just kind of be, keep that in mind. So what we've got here is we've got a basic slider that allows us to adjust the primitive color. And we're going to change that to use an expression. Everything inside of XGen basically is expression. You call a texture map, you call it via expression. You load a tool like the 3D paint tool, that happens again through an expression. So there's some presets that are right here at the top. Create map. It's the most basic one. It's going to create a texture map and it's going to also tie it to the ability to be worked with with that 3D uh, texture paint tool inside of Maya. If you wanted to do it yourself manually, you could say load expression, go down to samples, go to UI. You, you think color, but it's not really color. You go down to UI and you go to map. So this is where you could load the 3D paint tool with a map, the texture a map based on PTEX or um, you know a vector color map that was that you want to reference. So in this example, we're just going to sit simply hit the create map, which is again going to give us the ability to interact with that 3D paint tool. It's going to give it a name color that's naming the folder that it's going to be put in. So we're going to be on collection, description, and then that's going to be a folder called color. And we're going to leave this map resolution low. So this map resolution specifies how detailed of a PTEX texture map is going to be generated. So the higher the value, the more resolution you have, the finer detail you'll be able to capture. We're going to leave it low for now. So we'll go ahead and we'll hit create. As soon as we do that, you can see that our primitive color changed because it's now being derived from um, our, our working destination paint maps color. So if we jump out to our file browser, which I don't have loaded up here, so let's just do this. And if we go here, oops, looks like I'm in a different description there. Let's back up. Let's get back to our XGen collections. So we're now in collection and we've got a blank scene that's in description. We've got our paint maps and we've got our color. So that's that PTEX texture map that just got made for us. And it's, it's tiny, it's 1K, right? Because we left that resolution super, super small. So with that done, we can go in here and we can clear out our description here and we can just start painting on this. Actually, let's go ahead and click that paint tool. And as we paint across this, if we jump over to our hypershade, you'll see that what Maya's done is it's actually gone through for us and made this little, this little placeholder texture map. 
And this is really important. It does that for you automatically. Now, I think that was probably 2015 extension one that that automatic texture map got, get, got tied in there for you. That's really great because that means we can take this texture map and that's going to be the way that we're going to you know, tie it into Photoshop is using this texture map placeholder for us. It got, got generated automatically. So let's go ahead and generate a preview. We just, we just did this, right? So let's say, let's say uh, auto generate a preview on that guy. Well, what happens? We don't see anything. And the reason we don't see anything is because, as I mentioned before, XGen only works with PTEX files. The Maya paint tool is a traditional UV paint tool. This texture map that's coming in, also a traditional um, UV, you, you know, it's just, it's not a PTEX texture, right? So XGen goes to render this guy. It, it references off to this, this PTEX file, but we haven't changed that PTEX file. We haven't updated those, those painting strokes into that PTEX file. So every time you make a change to this texture, you need to click the save button. As soon as you click the save button, just like that, bam, it goes through and it tries to capture that detail. And you can see how blocky those textiles are of that PTEX texture. That's not cool. So this is great, right? Because all we have to do is go back here and say edit expression. So if you click the, um, the little expression icon here, you can see here's the 3D paint tool when it's converting from that UV map and that UV map might be, you know, it might be a 1K map, a 2K map, it doesn't matter how high that resolution is in that texture map, XGen is going to use this number right here, that 10 that we originally set to derive its its detail in the, in the PTEX texture. So if we put this up to something a little bit higher, like, I don't know, we'll just crank it to a thousand and we'll say accept, right? And now if I click the save button, it's gonna go through and you can see that obviously it's captured that detail a lot clearer and the map size grew from 1K to 25K. So it's still, it's still small, right? But it's enough to capture the detail of that brush stroke. Pretty straightforward. So here's how it can begin working with Photoshop, right? So if we jump over to Photoshop, inside of Photoshop, we'll just grab, I don't know, something and we'll type, not type, we'll use some sloppy pen painting to write test. It's horrible, but whatever. So we'll save this guy. And let's just see where I saved this as. I think I just saved it to my desktop. Yeah, so we just saved it as a, to my desktop. So great, we'll overwrite that guy. And if we jump back in here and go to this guy, bring up our property editor for this, our attribute editor, instead of just having this, this kind of blank placeholder that's receiving stroke information from that 3D paint tool, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and browse to our desktop and we'll grab this dude here and we'll say open. And now that we've done that, all we have to do is jump back into our XGen tool and click this refresh button. And there you go. You can see it's now got, you know, it's now got that new texture map and those guys are being colored from it. Now here's the thing that's kind of interesting. I've got it set so that we can, if we look in our textures here, I've got it set so that we can automatically have our texture maps update, right? So if we want, that's just a preference inside of um, inside of Maya. If you go to your preferences and where is that? I think that's under interface maybe. No, it's under files and projects. In files and projects, you can have automatically reload updated files. So that's, that's pretty cool. So if we jump back into uh, Photoshop and you know, like we do something like that and just hit control S or just say file save, you know, whatever. We've now updated that guy. So if we jump back over here, you will see that it's updated inside of Maya, that file texture is updated, but XGen didn't update. And the reason XGen didn't update again is because this is a UV map for XGen to get that kick to, to, to generate that P text. You got to jump back over here and just click the save button. So just keep that in mind. You got to keep clicking that save button to, to get the update to, uh, to grab that, to grab that information. So now what we want to do is we want to render this guy. So I've got my render settings where I'm going to get my render settings to be mental ray and we'll set the quality to be, you know, super low just so they get a nice fast little, little render of this guy. So we go re-render. And like I said before, the rendering and the primitives are you know, the primitive color in my viewport are not tied to each other. So we want to get that, that tied to each other. So this is, this is pretty straightforward to do, right? As I said before, all you need to do is get that paint maps color texture map. So if we jump back to where that guy lives, which is, you know, right here, 
I'm, I'm just going to copy paste this, this path just so it's easy for me to get to in my file browser and look at the name of the file. It's always going to be the name of the object that you've painted .ptex, right? So pretty straightforward, pplane1.ptex. So if we jump over to our materials for this guy, and new in, in 2016 is the ability, or I don't know when we added this. I think it was 2016. Maybe it was 2015 extension one. Anyway, we have a new physical hair shader. Beautiful shader. Does a great job. You can also apply standard Maya shaders to your descriptions, and they work. But what we want to do is we want to go to the color for this guy. So if we go to the attribute editor for this and click on color, we're going to scroll down here into the mental ray texturing section. We've added in all these great X-Gen P-Tex lookups. Really, really cool. So I'm going to show just the most basic one, which is just, you know, go ahead and do a P-Tex lookup. So all we have to do is file browse to uh, this destination. So if you paste in the file name and hit return, you'll see that it's going to take you to that guy. We're going to grab that, that texture map that we just made. We'll go ahead and we'll open that. So now if we kind of zoom out here a little bit and just, just click render, just like that, everything's hooked up. And we're going to be constantly referencing the same files now. So if I make any changes inside of Photoshop, all I have to do is click the um, click the generate ptext button on the extra description. It'll go through and automatically update that guy. So it's a really pretty straightforward workflow. You know, kind of once you get your head around it, and you you know, you kind of work around a couple of the little limitations as far as the auto update with that ptext texture map. Not not knowing to do that every time I every time I make a change in Photoshop. But once you once you get that, you should be all set. Hopefully this makes sense to you guys. Thanks so much for checking out Maya Mondays. Please uh, click the subscribe button. I'd, I'd really appreciate that. Cheers.